Recently, I saw a video from IPSEC showcasing unusual techniques for fuzzing a basic authentication form. He used fuff and the command looked like this. Instead of passing a normal file into the wordless flag, this weird looking format was used instead. If we run this, it will work as expected and we can recover the correct credentials. So in this video, I will explain the mechanism behind this, which is Linux process substitution. Normally, if we want to manipulate the output of a command, what we do is we pass it to another command. For example, if we want to sort the directory and files inside slash, we would do something like this. We first get the list, then send the standard output as the input for the next command, which is sort. After that, we see our desired output. But what if we want to pass several standard output to sort? This is where process substitution will help us. Instead of sort being seen at the very end of the chain, we will put it in front. Then we wrap our commands into parentheses. And we will put left angle bracket before the first parenthesis, which tells bash to pass the standard output into the standard input of sort. If we execute this command, we see here both contents of slash and slash temp sorted in alphabetical order. Whenever that is happening, bash creates a temporary file that holds the output of the command. In this case, it creates it under file descriptor 13. You see permission denied here because we use angle bracket to pass the standard output, but there is no other command standard input that catches it. File descriptors are just numbers that Linux used to track an open file. Some of them cannot just be listed because maybe they are not pointed to anything. But you can always use bash tab completion to see what are the possible and available numbers. The most common will be zero for the standard input, one for standard output, and two for standard error. Another nice use of process substitution is when we want to find the differences between the contents of two directories. For example, we have here two application directories that contain a lot of files. Typically, what would you do is to list the contents of the directories and store them inside separate files and compare those files using diff. Process substitution allows you to quickly do that in one step. This is really helpful, especially if you are looking for something unusual. Another example is when we are fuzzing to look for peculiarities on the different outputs of a program. We can use git diff and pass the output of two file descriptors. Without creating any permanent file on disk, we will be able to see the difference in the output. There are more ways on how you can use process substitution like looking for unusual network connections in Netstat or analyzing capture files on the fly using t -shark. Feel free to explore yourself and share it on the comments below so everybody will learn. I hope you learned something today. If you find my content valuable, please support me by liking this video and subscribing to my channel. See you on the next one.